call the eighth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman. Excused. Berg. Excused. Bonet. Here. Doyle. Here. Graf. Here. Manning. Here. Monty Mayer. Here. Moody. Excused. Perez. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Stephan. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Wangaman. Here. Warner. Here. Winninger. Here. 13 present. Corms present. Alderman Graf. Here, and I'll move that we um, approve the minutes of the last coming council meeting and publish in the same standard. And the same stand approved. <coughs> Moved and seconded that the minutes of the previous <coughs> council meeting be approved. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Manny, would you lead us in a pledge, please? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Mayor's appointment, Steve. This is David. Today's His microphone. Steve. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. David Rapinski to be considered for appointment to the Citizens Advisory Committee on Community Development to fill the unexpired term of Teresa Blundell. Does not meet residency requirement, whose term expires 4-30-04, signed by the mayor. And that will lay over. Presentations this evening. Denny Moyer from the Chamber of Convention and Visitor Bureau is here this evening. Denny. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Pleasure to be here. In fact, it's really a pleasure. I wasn't sure after last week that I was going to survive it. I don't know if you were aware of it, but that Amistad was here last week. And it was an absolutely wonderful, wonderful uh, event. And before I start with my presentation, I want to thank uh, the city and the various committees and departments that, uh, that helped our committee put that on because uh, we couldn't have done it without you. And we, we, do, we, do, we do appreciate it. Now, because of your full agenda earlier in the spring, uh, matters bearing heavily on economic development, uh, I thought it'd be wise to put off our annual report until a little bit later in the year, although you have a big schedule tonight too, so maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Um, and while tourism is a priority, I don't know if you would have you know, given us your full attention earlier. But since it is already July, I think it would be wise to not only give you a review of 2002, but also give you a report of the first six months of 2003. So with the time that I have tonight, I will give you brief summaries of, of both. You have all the statistics and all of the material in your packets that you can look over at your leisure. Um, so I will not you know, bore you to death with numbers tonight. Uh, before I get into this though, I, I need to uh, thank the entire chamber staff uh, for their diligent effort on behalf of tourism. Uh, the knowledge that they impart and their helpfulness and their courteous to visitors, uh, their efficiency in response to the thousands of requests that we get, I think more than any other single thing uh, makes Sheboygan tourism successful and they need to be recognized for that. Uh, both the staff and the chamber board because they understand how important tourism is as well. The council doesn't get the recognition it deserves either. Um, Mayor Schramm and the council members, you need to be commended for your foresight uh, in tourism and, and your knowledge of the importance uh, that it, it gives to economic development. So uh, on behalf of the chamber, I thank you very, very much. And not only on behalf of the chamber, but on behalf of the, behalf of the thousands of people who earn their livings in tourism and the, and the hundreds of businesses that, uh, that do. A classic understatement might be to say that 2002 was a challenging year. Uh, it was all of that. It began for us late in 2001. Uh, economic times were down, as you understand, and we were wondering just what to do with our tourism dollars because we didn't know how much traveling was going to go on. Uh, and then everybody's world changed when those two jets ran into the 
World Trade Center. Now, even before that, we expected revenues would be down, but, but now this, what's going to happen to tourism? Uh, how is the American traveling public going to react to that? Certainly, people aren't going to be anxious to jump into airplanes for a while. Would they travel at all? The fear factor, the financial factor, the uncertainty of the time, uh, would we be going to war? Would there be more terrorist attacks? Are there going to be more layoffs? What's going to happen to the price of gas? All these things were going around in our head as we were planning to budget for tourism. Because of the seasonal nature of tourism here in Sheboygan, we need to do our planning in late winter and early spring. We need to do all our investing then, hoping, hoping that it will be attractive enough to lure tourists here so that they will stay in our hotels, we will collect room tax, and we will get our money back that we put out in the spring. I, uh, because of the uncertain nature of what was going to happen, my recommendation to my advisory board was that we take a conservative path. I didn't feel that we should be spending money that we might not be able to get back, and I proposed to do only the promotion that was necessary, and my advisory board agreed. I cut back on trade shows, I cut back on electronic advertising, I cut back on print advertising. I emphasize partnerships and co-op advertising programs that would stretch our dollars. The cutbacks are reflected in the downturn in inquiries. But as the year wore on, people began to resume traveling. Uh, at least short trip traveling, and that is where our bread is buttered here. So we had a decent year and room tax monies came in better than we anticipated. But while things turned out surprisingly well, I have to tell you that I would make the same decision again. Uh, those were very shaky times. The market, marketing we did is all outlined um, in the attached 2002 CVB promotion report and the tracking material is all there as well. Uh, quickly, our inquiries in 2002 were up 7.4%, which is a huge increase uh, because of website activity. Uh, and that offset the drop in trade show and, and uh, print responses. Uh, despite the hesitancy and all the questions regarding tourism in 2002, the bottom line is that room tax revenues increased for the city and traveler expenditures in Sheboygan County <coughs> rose to $267 million. Uh, that's an increase of more than $4 million over 2001. Now let's take a quick look at where we are in 2003. As we saw 2002 picking up toward the end of the year, uh, we began to get a little more aggressive in our thinking for 2003. Uh, we planned to do print ads in 20 different publications this year. We planned appearances at eight trade shows. We planned to do our usual publications, uh, plus reprint the trails map and redo the fishing brochure. We plan to expand our efforts in electronic media. We plan to develop our, our continue our partnerships and, and develop more, and we wanted to investigate doing some new brochures. We are carrying forth with all those plans. The economy, as you know, still hasn't recovered, and terrorism is still in the back of many people's minds. But we anticipated that this would be a good tourism year, as our cultural and our rec uh, recreational inventory continues to grow and develop. Uh, we budgeted for an increase in room tax revenues. Plus, because of our cautionary approach last year, we had an $80,000 carryover from 2002, some of which, of course, is due to our partnership with Sheboygan County and the town of Sheboygan. Uh, the aggressive campaign has resulted in a dramatic increase in inquiries at the halfway point this year. Uh, in all of 2002, we had 85,000 inquiries. Through the first six months of 2003, we already have 61,000. Uh, and the most dramatic is in response to our print advertising. Uh, we've had more than 17,000 already this year, and last year we only had 6,700. Now again, you have all the numbers in front of you, so I'm not going to go over it, but uh, I would like you to turn to page three if you've got the thing in front of you there. Sheboygan County Tourism Items of Note. I'd just like to quickly review these. Economic impact was 267 million, an increase of 1.63% over 2001. Now, 1.63% may not sound like much to crow about, but con consider that a lot of counties were down last year. So to, to break even or come out a little ahead is, is a good year. Uh, we retained our ninth place ranking among Wisconsin's 72 counties. Uh, tourism provided 
4,612 full-time equivalent jobs in the county, an increase of almost 2%. Tourism provided $84.6 million in resident income, an increase of 4.5%. Tourism is the best investment you can make. For every tourism dollar spent by the CVB last year, $833 was returned to our economy. Sheboygan County generates $15.6 million in state revenue and $7.9 million in local revenue. Now, you ladies and gentlemen are always talking about keeping taxes down. Were it not for the money tourism generates in taxes and fees, each Wisconsin resident would face an average of $992 in additional taxes annually to maintain existing government services. Increase for 2003 are 33% of last year. Uh, stories about Sheboygan and Sheboygan County tourism appeared in 29 publications last year, <coughs> and this year already in 16, and we've been advertising in more than 30 different editions. A last word about partnerships. They pay off. Our partnership with Wisconsin Harbor Towns has resulted in a $26,000 coastal management grant that will be used for a Harbor Towns visitor's guide, which by the way we'll be getting tomorrow. Our partnership with Manitowoc and Fond du Lac counties resulted in, 10, 000, in a $10,000 GEM grant to promote the Lake to Lake Arts connection. And our partnership with Elkhart Lake resulted in a $34,000 GEM grant to promote uh, fall tourism this year. Now while our marketing plans for 2004 are still in a preliminary stage, we are considering in investing in new collateral material including fishing, dining, and retail brochures so that we can take advantage of the huge influx of tourism and visitors that we're going to have next year. You're all aware of the golf tournament, but you may not be aware that we have the state bowling tournament here next year as well. And that is January through May, a time when usually things are pretty quiet. So we anticipate a good year next year. Uh, nonetheless, we're gonna start planning for 2005 because there might be a little drop. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I don't know what your time is like, but... Council? Again, thank you so much. We appreciate all your support. Denny, hang on. Alderman Doyle. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a quick question. Uh, I'm very supportive of your efforts, but I've always been curious, like I get Midwest Living, and uh, it's a popular magazine, but in a typical issue, it'll have like four or 500, you know, ads for different communities. How do you know if those things are effective or not when there are so many other ads in the, in the issue, if you understand what I'm Well, the only thing we can do is count the inquiries we get from the magazines. Uh, and Midwest Living is one of our number one. Good Housekeeping and Midwest Living are, are, are number one and two response vehicles. Midwest Living this, this year already has resulted in more than, I think, 14 or 1,500 inquiries. Now, the question is, do they convert to travelers? And we don't know. I mean, we just don't know. But there has to be, if there's that many inquiries, there's got to be a certain percentage. You know, you go to bat 10 times, you've got to get <coughs> hit. You know, so so something. it's good. that tear-out thing in the back that they fill That's out. That's right. They fill that out, and, and we get labels, we send them back. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Jenny. Public forum? No. Okay, with that, we'll go to the consent agenda. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, for items 8.1 through 8.21, I move that our, all our O's be accepted and filed, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and all the resolutions be put upon their passage. Move to second that all our C's be accepted and adopted, our O's accepted and filed, and the resolutions be put upon their passage. That's 8.1 through 8.21. Is there any discussion? Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 817, I, I noticed that phase two environmental study for the northwest corner of 8th and Indiana is going to proceed. And I just thought that's a real good move. We need to develop that property, that beautiful piece of choice property, as fast as we can and get some tax revenue from there. <coughs> Thanks. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Doyle? Groff, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Stefan, Van Agren, Vanderweel, Wangeman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Winninger, 
Bonnet. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 822 through 826 to be referred. 827 will lie over. 828 through 840 to be referred. 841 will lie over. 842 and 43 will be referred. 844 by protection, Public Protection Safety recommending grant, grant various license. Alderman Vanderweel. Make a motion to accept and adopt DRC. Move it in, second to accept and adopt DRC under discussion. Under discussion, I need to amend the RC by holding uh, 6084, 6052, and 5083. Just a second. 6084, 6052, and 5083. Thank you. I need a. Okay, let's move to second on amendment. Is there any discussion on amendment? If not, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, proceed. Then I'd like to pass the RC as amended. Moved and seconded. Uh, RC be put upon its passage. Be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. Hearing none, will you call the roll? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 845 to be referred, also 846. And Alderman Vanderweel, you want to speak on 846? Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to make a statement about the pet fanciers permit. In Sunday's paper, a letter to the editor regarding the pet fanciers permit stated that pet owners with three or more pets would have to pay for the permit. I just wanted to say that this is incorrect. The permit is free with the license of your pets. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 684, 757, and 758 will lie over, and we will explain that to you shortly. Tonight, I'd like to present everyone with update on the Blue Harbor Project and our progress on completing all documents related to its success. Over the past several days, our city staff have been working tirelessly in order to meet our financial closing deadline of July 31st. It appears now that this will happen. In fact, the plan is to have our financial documents for review and approved by you on the 28th and close on July 30th. Throughout the discussions of the past couple of days, we have been able to clarify and protect the city's position as it relates to the development agreement presented to you last week. While these discussions have led to several language changes, the city's position will continue to be protected. Our legal representation, Ann Coomer, is here with us this evening to brief you on these changes. In order to incorporate these changes to the agreement and to allow the approval of the financial agreement at the same time, the city's documents will be ready for approval on the 28th. Copies of the documents will be distributed to everyone in the next couple of days. While our original intent was to approve the development agreement this evening, the discussion over the past couple of days have been foresight, beneficial, and necessary to ensure a successful project, that a successful project will continue to protect the city's position. To pass on this opportunity would have been short-sighted. Again, to clarify for everyone, we will be able to approve both our development agreement and our financial agreement on July 28th. In addition, we will have an agreement that continues to protect and clarify our position. I would encourage everyone to continue their support on this vital project. Thank you. With that, I would like to ask Ann to lend her expertise in explaining our position to everyone and where we're going from here. Ann? And I have notes tonight. <laughs> I have notes tonight to make sure I cover everything. Um, over the past several months, the mayor and others in the city administration have come before this council on several occasions to ask for approval of prior versions of the development agreement and on other occasions to advise the council of any proposed changes to the transaction which in our opinion differed from what had previously been approved by the council. As the mayor pointed out, we're here tonight to do that again. 
We all believe we are nearing the end of the development agreement negotiation. For a lot of us and a lot of concerned citizens, it's been a painstakingly slow process, but as you know, good things seldom come easy and haste rarely goes along with caution. We all think that the South Pier District is a very special piece of real estate. When the city acquired the South Pier land, it did so believing that it had the possibility of becoming one of the many jewels in the city's crown. A property that if properly used would provide benefits to the city well beyond the boundaries of the land itself. This was not property that the city would part with easily because along with the knowledge that it was special came the fear that we may have but one chance to, as they say, get it right. As a result, it's been the city's understanding throughout the process that while we may enter in a, into an agreement with the developer prior to a closing, we would not convey the property by lease to the developer or mortgage the authority's interest in it until we were assured to our satisfaction that everything needed to make the project happen was in place. At the least, this meant that between the developer's own funds, the construction lender's loan funds, and the fixed amount of money the city had agreed to contribute to the project, the entire cost of the project was at hand. Recently, in recognition of the multiple parties to the transaction and the complexity of the transaction, it was proposed that the transaction close in stages. And that's what your uh, development agreement last week reflected. Our documents would have been signed, but we would have held them in escrow until all of the other elements of the transaction were completed. We've been told, however, that, while, that this will not satisfy the conditions of the developer's arrangement with its equity investors. So the city's being asked to close with the developer this month, by the, July 31st, albeit with certain conditions that would protect us from funding any part of our money for the resort or the convention center until the construction lender has also agreed to fund its construction loan. The practical effects of closing this month, rather than closing in escrow, are that we will be entering into the lease with the developer, signing the mortgage, uh, to secure the developer's obligations to the construction lender. We would need no further extensions of the early start letters because the construction would progress under the development agreement. Should the transaction for some reason fail to come together, say if the construction lender for some reason failed to close for any reason, we would be in a position of foreclosing our lease to clear title to our parcel. We would obtain a release of the construction lender's mortgage and possibly observe other conditions of the development agreement, all of which not, might not be necessary if we waited until all of the essential elements were in place. We would have more construction on the site, and if the de developer doesn't complete it, we would have to deal with that greater amount of construction. But we believe there are ways to address these items in advance. I'd like to go through those ways that we think we can address those items in advance protect the city, and we would place these protections in the development agreement. First, none of the city's $12.2 million would be paid out unless the city's conditions to funding are met and the construction lender is also prepared to fund its construction loan. The city would not fund any of its $12.2 million if there were any conditions to the funding other than those specifically approved by the city in its discretion. Second, the equity investor's money would be deposited with the title company that will handle construction disbursements and we would receive an acknowledgement that it is available to be dispersed. That money would be available to pay for the work that is currently ongoing at the site and the work that will be done prior to the city's money and the construction lender's money being used. Third, the construction lender would also close its loan at the same time that the city closes, even though the construction lender is not yet ready to say it will fund that loan. The construction lender is still in the process of receiving information and reviewing it and approving it. Fourth, if for any reason the construction lender is not prepared to fund its loan by September 30th at the latest, that would be a material breach of all of the city's documents, and the city, at its option, could declare a default in either for <laughs> You didn't want to hear me anymore. <laughs> 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 
and the city could at that point declare a default and either foreclose on its ground lease or ter terminate its documents. Fifth, all of the fees of the transaction payable to the construction lender and any brokers would be paid out of the equity that has been deposited with the title company. And six, the construction lender would agree with the city that if for any reason the construction lender does not fund its loan, the construction lender will satisfy the mortgage that the authority gives it on its fee interest. We spoke today with both the developer and the attorney for the construction lender on these points. Both were in agreement with these terms. We can tell you that the construction lender is working on this transaction. The construction lender has said that it will be prepared to close the transaction with the city by the end of the month. And the construction lender will work diligently after that to get to the point of funding the transaction. There's a second point. The construction lender does not want us to declare a default under our documents if the deposit to the $500,000 reserve fund that is required by January 1st of 2005 is not made. We have proposed and the developer has agreed that if the deposit is not made by January 1st of 2005, then rather than return the condominium completion escrow, the entire million dollars that the city will be holding to the developer, a minimum of $200,000 of that money will be used to fund the reserve. That is the amount projected to be needed on January 1, 2005. We believe that is actually a um, better arrangement for the city on this point. So those are the two significant changes that we wanted to point out to you that will be reflected in the development agreement that comes out this week and that you'll be voting on next week. Thank you, Ann. Steve, did you have to add, you want to add anything? Uh, not to add anything, Mayor, but just uh, invite questions? the council if they have any questions on where we are. Alder McGrath, we would need a motion to proceed then with this as the language changed, correct? Your Honor, I would move that we proceed with the language changes as outlined by the Second. Moved and seconded. Under discussion. Alderman Rankley. Um, thank you for the presentation regarding uh, what changes are being made. I'm a little concerned about uh, agreeing to the changes without actually having a document in front of me to vote on in black and white. Yeah, if I, if I could address that, uh, Your Honor. I guess, Alderman Renfleisch, that's a good point. You would not be approving those changes. I guess we want to get a sense as to whether the council is willing to uh, continue along uh, in that vein to make those changes, to insert them in the document that would then be presented to you. Back and on if, the 28th. If the council says, no, they don't want to do that, they want the deal just the way it is, then we can save a lot of time. You know, we won't have to do that. And, uh, and we'll, you know, go another course. But this is to get a sense of the council as to whether that sounds like it uh, is something we should pursue. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Could we ask Rich just to give us his opinion on, sure. on this, if, if he would, please? Where is Rich this evening? Rich. I believe, as Ann stated, that uh, we feel that after some of this discussion, which really was started by the lender in some of these areas, like the reserve, uh, that this is a more comfortable position than what we had before for the city. And obviously, it took both sides to reach agreement on it, but I think it is, is beneficial to the city. Rich, can you speak up just a little bit? They can't hear you up front here. Okay. Maybe you got to hold a little. Okay. okay. Could you restate what you just said? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, is this better? All right. Uh, as I stated earlier, uh, I felt that. Uh, after this discussion, which I said started by uh, the lender uh, for Great Lakes, uh, initially on the reserve, uh, that uh, really is more beneficial for the city and, and the approach on here that we worked out together with Great Lakes, uh, that we know that there'd be a minimum amount of funding if the other funding is not in place, uh, that we would uh, transfer basically part of this escrow, uh, condo escrow, into the reserve. So. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Honor. I think it's a good idea to get the changes into the document so we can look at the whole document with the changes in it. 
obviously makes sense. Uh, I think this has been a living document as we've been going along. We're all aware of the fact that there have been many changes made with all everything that's in, in that agreement. There's bound to be a few more that may pop up come our Monday, November, or July 28th meeting yet too. Hopefully not, but uh, it is a, it's, a, it's a document still in the works and by getting these changes in, we'll have a solid document, at least a lot more solid than we have right now. And I think it's beneficial to do that so the council can review the entire thing. Thanks. Alderman Rangflesh. Just one more question. Um, would you classify the uh, request made by the, um, uh, pardon me if I don't get the, the terminology correct, but the lending partners of the developer, um, would you classify their request as a way of securing or per perhaps providing more confidence in the project that uh, on their behalf? Or why, why did they come forward with these requests? The, um, I'm only pausing to make sure <laughs> I understand your question. Um, yes. Now, the equity investors, I think, if you're asking about that, I think it's just the terms of the arrangement with the equity investors would not l allow us to do it in a two-stage closing. So I think it's just the terms that they've already agreed to with them, and that's on the equity side. On the construction lender side, um, the construction lender will be looking at subs a lot of the same things the city is looking and other things. Uh, they will also be looking at them with, um, not with the same interests of the city, but sort of the same view of the city. You're both looking at everything as lenders. So to the extent a construction lender wants something done, it is more than likely also going to be protecting the city. Is that responsive? Yes. Okay. And I guess the final question I have regarding that is, if it's beneficial to the city, uh, why was not something perhaps something we requested from initially from the negotiation standpoint? We did. Um, it's a timing issue. Originally, or the way the document stands now, well, the way the document was originally or stood now, that would have all been done prior to the closing. Now what we're saying is we're going to close with certain of the conditions that would have been taken care of prior to the fact, or prior to the closing, now being taken care of after t the closing, but prior to the funding of the money. Okay. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple of more questions. I guess I'm a little confused. How can a construction lender agree to close on a deal without actually lending money? And the second part of that question is, if we're going to be closing September, 30th, I believe you said. Does that not, in effect, mean an extension again? Um, on your first point, the construction lender is going to close. It's what the construction lender is saying. They'll have all of their documents signed. Everything will be operational, but the construction lender is saying, but we don't have to fund our money until certain, certain things happen, until we've had a chance to receive certain documents and certain things have been reviewed and approved. But the construction lender will be closed and like the city, will just fund at a later date. That's, I think, your first question. And I've already forgotten your second question. <laughs> I'm sorry. The 30th, when we have another question. Oh, the 30th, answer. I'm sorry. We're both closing on the 31st. What we're saying is we want this thing funded. We want all of this receipt of documentation and review. We want to get that done. And we want it done by at the latest, the 30th. It could happen sooner than that. But we've kind of put an outside date on getting that information and reviewing it and approving it so that we can have the funding occur not later than the 30th. It's, it's a way of getting a, the finality to the funding. Alderman Warner. I think uh, it's similar to closing on a house. A lot of times when you close on a house, you don't get the pile of money right away in that aspect. But I guess beyond that, I'm really glad to see the fact that all these lenders are taking such a good look at this because it makes me feel more comfortable that they're going to ensure and make sure that their money is protected because they're uh, really looking at everything that's involved. And I think that's very important. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to ask you to clarify the closing date. Was that July 31st? It's on or before July 31st, yes. Thank you. Well, okay, if there's another discussion, would you call the roll, please? And this is just to add the changes to the right. development agreement. It's not voting for the development agreement. Manny. 
Yes. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleit. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Longerman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Weninger. Aye. Bonnet. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Graf. Aye. Thirteen. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Those light over, everybody knows why they're lying over until the 28th. 759, resolution by Alderman Groff, Longman, authorizing continuation of a self-insured workers' compensation program. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. And can I also take resolution 761, which is um, by um, myself, Alderman Weninger, Stephen Doyle, and Renee, authorizing transferring of funds to establish estimated revenue and appropriations for donation received for park benches. I would move that those two resolutions be put upon their passage. Moved and seconded that the resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. Alderman Rankfleisch. Uh, regarding the transfer from the general fund contribution to the park benches, uh, I hope that fund does include enough money for signs to go on the park benches. <laughs> Wet paint signs here, friends. <laughs> There's no other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Wongerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wanninger? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Ross? Aye. Manny? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. S31 lies over. 461 lies over. Alderman Groff, do you want to explain something yes. there? Um, S31 is um, for funding of the, the uh, South Pier project. And um, 461 is also for funding in that, except 461 is for our own work by the Public Works Department. And rather than waiting till September 30th um, to fund that, um, finance um, has discussed it, and um, we would like to proceed with that August 4th to fund that portion, which is a million seven forty four five hundred, which is for public works to do um, the lights and uh, storm sewer and sanitary sewer and water, streets, sidewalks, and trees um, for that South Pier project. Um, and Tom is running out of time right now because the summer is fast fading, and um, so he'd like this, this done uh, on our original date of August 4th. Thank you. 770, by Public Protection and Safety, recommend amending the two-hour parking limit limits regulations to add the north side of Washington Avenue from the east curb line of South 12th Street to a point east. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the attached ordinance. Moved in second to accept and adopt the report to committee and pass the ordinance. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this is in reference to a communication from the president of Coldwell Banker and Werner Holmes requesting a two-hour parking limit between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. school days only in front of their building. There has been an ongoing problem with the high school across the street and students parking there uh, throughout the day and littering problems and this just will help turn over in the neighborhood during the week during school hours only and the residents in the area will be able to park there on weekends, nights, holidays, Sundays. So, Public Protection and Safety recommends approval. <laughs> We're ready to. If there's, no other, if there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Motion carried. 847, RO by the Board of Electrical Examiners submitting license which have been issued. Who is taking that one? Somebody Jerry. Jer Alderman Doyle, you want to take that? Oh. Alderman Bauman isn't here for that. Yeah, uh, I move that we accept and file the uh, report of officer. Moved and seconded, accept and file the RO under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Aye. Stephen? Aye. 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 Aye.
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Eight forty-nine is an RO by the city clerk submitting a summons and complaint in the matter of Lighthouse Therapy Services for alleged problems with their sewer. Committee on Risk Management. Eight fifty is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Pam Rieger for alleged damage to her clothing when she came in contact with newly painted benches and tables at Cleveland Park. Special Committee on Risk Management. Eight fifty-one is a communication from Michael Harvey, CEO of Vandervart, objecting to being assessed for the water main along the south end of their yard. Public Works. 852 is a communication from Ms. Michelle Sommerfeld of Davil Engineering, along with the Platt Affidavit of Correction for Still Meadows Platt, located in the town of Sheboygan, in reference to the highway setback for lots 19 and 20. That will go to Planning Commission. 853 is a communication from Jim Rhino, 512 South Water Street, stating he believes the Committee on Public Protection and Safety should have had their meeting on July 16th, even without a quorum. That will go to public protection and safety. Mike, before we adjourn, did you want to discuss this at all? Alderman Brown addressed it. Okay. Or pardon me, Alderman Warner addressed it. Okay. Excellent. Move to adjourn. Moved and second to adjourn. Under discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye.